Shall we move on to a bit of a sunnier, more colourful topic? Now, I mentioned earlier that I am within the sand dune system. It's an amazing habitat, and there are lots of specialised species here, including sand lizards that make their home in amongst the dense vegetation, where they'll find cover and invertebrates, their prey species, as well as the soft sand, which they use to mate, warm up, and lay their eggs within. Now, they are one of the UK's rarest reptiles, but here in Studland is one of the highest concentrations of sand lizards, and they are absolutely beautiful and a delight to see. We sent out our cameras to see whether we could see any mating. We didn't get mating, but we did get send in this amazing footage from one of you at home. Two sand lizards going about their reproduction ritual. You can see the male, green there, very bright, taking an interest in the female, and he bites her at the base of the tail, now she will kind of continue walking, so he must hold on tight and he will bend his body around to fertilize those eggs. Still again, holding on tight, bit of a tight grip there. Actually, it's so tight that sometimes you can tell if a female has been mated with because she will bear the scarring of that male bite mark on her back. But they are really brilliant and we did want to get glimpses of them potentially even going into their burrows where they lay their eggs. So we sent out Mark Yates, our wildlife cameraman, who followed a female for two days. And this is the story that he got. He happened to find a female and she was very, very obviously well, bearing a lot of eggs. They can lay between six and twelve and you can see how big her stomach is there. And she's basically prospecting different burrows because she wants to find the perfect one. But when she's looking in, she's obviously quite vulnerable. She has to check up for predators, birds of prey, kestrels, buzzards and things that will take them from above. So she looks out to check the coast is safe and moves on to prospect another burrow. And it is very much a Goldilocks situation. You don't want a burrow that's too dry because ultimately your eggs could shrivel up. You don't want one that's too wet either because otherwise it could be a little bit mouldy and nobody wants that, especially a sand lizard. And then one too shady as well, well then they won't incubate your eggs. You need the sand to be nice and warm under the heat of the sun so that those eggs will develop nicely and if it's too cold then they won't. And she emerges here to see a female larger than herself. There's a bit of competition for potential burrows and um, well the larger female with more eggs chases off our female. But no bother, there are lots of perfectly good burrows around. She takes her leave and then returns to checking out a good place for her eggs. It's really unusual to see this. It's brilliant to watch them find the right burrow. There she is. Has she found one that's just right? I think she might have done. She nestles herself in. This is later on in the evening. She finds this burrow at about seven o'clock, so the sun is starting to set. It gets a little bit chilly. So she nestles in for the rest of the night to lay those eggs. Now, 16 hours later, she does emerge. Mark Yates stayed until the, the darkness came and arrived then at 4 a.m. later. There wasn't any activity until 11 a.m., as I said, 16 hours later, where the female then comes out of her burrow. She has laid those eggs, as I said, somewhere between 6 and 12. And she pokes her head up, see if it's warm enough, soaking in those sun, ray, ray, sun rays and she covers the burrow again, making sure that it is safe from predators before she decides it's time to go off and do what reptiles do best and uh, have a nice time in the sunshine. Really unusual to see them coming out of their burrows. Lots of data shows them going in, but to actually watch the entire process is quite new and quite exciting. Now I have some eggs here. Now these are replica sand lizard eggs and they'll be about two centimeters in length. And um, they're really, really tiny and they're quite plain and the burrows themselves will be about seven centimeters deep. Enough so that they get a lot of the sun rays, but not so deep that they're gonna be easily found by predators. What about that sand lizard action? can't get much better than that. 